Transformation Tuesday, each and every Tuesday, we are out here. Tonight's um, message is entitled, Turning the Page, Navigating Change and Transition with Clarity and Courage. So again, good evening, everyone. I hope you had a uneventful day, or if it was eventful, that you found fruit in this day. So welcome to Transformation Tuesday. Today we're diving into a powerful and important topic. Knowing when it's time to turn the page in your life, to let go of what no longer serves you, and to step confidently into the next chapter. This past Sunday, we started dealing with change. Uh, and as I thought about it, I, I think we need to go a little deeper or take some back steps before we get into change. So whether this is your first time joining me tonight, uh, you've been on a journey before, I'm glad that you decided to be here. Together, we're, ex we're gonna explore how to navigate both change and transition and understand the role that ambivalence plays in this process. So our objective today is to help you recognize when it's time to move on, uh, embrace change, and work through the internal process of transition. So by the end of tonight's conversation, you'll have a better understanding of how change impacts you externally, how transition transform you internally, and how ambivalence often stands in the middle of both. Now, ambivalence is neither good or bad. It's being in between. And sometimes it's good to be in between, in a betwixt. Without being in between, without being in a betwixt, can you imagine how many decisions you would have made just off the cuff? So there's a place for ambivalence. I want to start with some key definitions. I want to look at change versus transition. So let's start by defining two essential concepts that are these concepts are change and transition. At first glance, they may appear to be the same for some. Change is the external shift that happens in your life like a new job, that's change, a move, that's change, or the end of a relationship, that's change. It's the event or situation itself. Now, transition, unlike change, which is external, transition is internal. It's the psychological process of adapting to that change. It's what happens inside of you as you adjust, let go of the old and prepare for the new. So I want you to remember that change is always external, transition is internal, and transition has to do with the psychological process of adapting to the change. It's what's happening inside of you as you adjust. Now, while change happens externally, it's the transition that truly determines whether we grow through it as we go through it. Many of us focus on external change, but without understanding the importance of the internal transition, growth doesn't fully take place. Oh, you may grow older, but you did not mature. You didn't get what you should have gotten in the midst of what you were going through. Additionally, I want to induce ambivalence in change and transition. So there's three terms we're dealing with tonight. We're dealing with change, which is external, transition, which is internal. And now we want to begin to look at ambivalence. Now, there's something that often gets in the way of fully embracing change and moving through the transition. 
And that something is ambivalence. Now, ambivalence is the state of having mixed feelings or contradictory ideas about something. You ever had that? It's the tug of war between wanting to move forward and being tempted to stay where you are. When faced with change, ambivalence makes us question whether we are ready for something new, even if the old chapter is already closing. Now, sometimes we talk about cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance oftentimes can be confused with ambivalence. So we want to know what ambivalence is all about. Ambivalence can show up in different ways, okay? During change, you may feel excited about a new opportunity, but at the same time, fear losing the familiarity of the past. It shows up then. During transition, ambivalence shows up. It's often felt as a desire to hold on to the old while knowing you need to embrace the new. You might feel uncertain about letting go of your past identity, even if it no longer serves you. So ambivalence is normal. We all experience it at times of transition and change. But the key is to recognize it and working with it and working through it. So it doesn't keep us stuck in a chapter that's already finished. And you know some people that are stuck. And you don't want to be stuck because there comes frustration. Now, I want you to ask you a question. Can you think of a time when you felt ambivalent about change? You don't have to respond, but I want you to give that some thought. A time when you felt ambivalent about change. Now, what was holding you back? You identify a time that you have felt ambivalent about changing, about moving, about taking a new job, about breaking up, or about getting into a relationship. What was holding you back? I want to use a story tonight um, from the Bible because many of us are familiar with those stories and they are part of our program. And I want to talk about Exodus as a metaphor for transition. So let's turn to this powerful biblical story, the story of Exodus. We find that the Israelites had spent 400 years in Egypt. And though they were enslaved, they had become familiar with their way of life. When the time came for change, when God delivered them from Egypt, they were ready for freedom. But here's the challenge. They couldn't let go of the past. Even after leaving Egypt, they still thought, act, and lived as Egyptians, walked like an Egyptian. When things got tough in the wilderness, they longed to go back to what they knew, even if it meant returning to bondage. This is ambivalence at its core. Wanting the new, but clinging to the comfort of the old. They were free in body, but their minds were stuck in the past. Do you know anybody like that? Do you know a people group that's like that? They couldn't fully transition into their new identity because they were trapped in ambivalence, unable to turn the page. Many people who convert to different religions or may become a Christian or may become um, um, practicing another faith, they oftentimes have a difficult time transitioning into that. They have ambivalence. So that's my question this evening for you. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you were free to move forward, but your mind kept pulling you back to what was familiar? 
And it's not so much as the mind as it's the memory. It's the sensory self that could reflect pictures or thoughts of times of old when you can't even project what tomorrow is going to be. We find it more um, comfortable sometimes to stay in the land of the known. So we, we want to be, be cautious of that. We want to learn how to differentiate between change and transition. Um, many years ago, I, I read a book um, that was written by this individual by the name of William Bridges. He wrote a book on change and transitions. I've read, I've read that book a number of times and it's so appropriate. So I'm going to introduce some things from that book to you tonight. So according to William Bridges, there are three key phrases, phases to transition. Three phases to transition. Now, the first phase of transition is the ending. Okay, so it's the ending, the neutral zone, and the new beginning. So what are the three phases of transition? Yes, the ending, the neutral zone, and the beginning. Now let's explore them. The ending, this is where you let go of what was. It's the process of accepting that a chapter has ended. Now something can end, but it takes time for you to uh, adjust to it. It takes time to come to the realization I no longer work there. It takes time to come to the realization that that's no longer my mate for someone who is going through a separation or divorce. So the ending is where you let go of what was. It's the process of accepting that a chapter has ended. Even if that means letting go of something that is familiar or comfortable. That's why it's difficult. Because it's comfortable. It's familiar. And even if it's uncomfortable right now, you have this false sense of hope that it can return to comfortableness. But you got to have the ending. So the next phase of the three phases is the neutral zone. The neutral zone, this is the in-between phase where the old has ended, but the new hasn't fully come. It's often a time of uncertainty, discomfort, and introspection. Right now, when we look at uh, what's going on in the earth, even if we talk about the moving from the Piscean age, which is over, and the age of Aquarius, which is here. But so we're in a neutral zone. We're in that period of when people fully embrace the newness. When you're in a neutral zone, the old and the new have a tendency to still kiss up of against you, kiss up against one another. So we got to know that there is this middle zone, the in-between phase where the old has ended. And you got to remind yourself, but the new hasn't fully come yet because it hasn't really displaced the energy of the old. Now, the new beginning. So you got the ending the neutral zone, and the new beginning. Now, the new beginning, this is where you step fully into your new chapter. But this, is only hap this only happens after you've gone through the process of letting go and navigating the in-between space. The neutral zone is like the children of Israel when they um, left Egypt. And they were in the wilderness. And the promised land was on the other side. They were in a gap. They were in a space. And there was a lesson that is taught here. We see all three phases existing at the same time. We see the old that has ended. But is still hot on their tails. We see the present moment of respite 
where they can breathe, a neutral place where they can regather themselves. And then they can look over into the Jordan and see the possibility, the land of promise, the land of possibility. All three exist, but you got to work through them. Now, the question tonight is, what are the signs that it's time to turn the page? Okay. I'm going to ask a couple questions. And they're more reflective for you right now. But I'm going to give them to you as an assignment. So how do you know when it's time to turn the page in your life? Okay, let me give you some signs. Here are some clear telltale signs that I have seen time in and time out, having dealt with hundreds of clients in my coaching practice. And most of the work they're doing has to do with change and transition. So here's some signs. Do you feel stuck? Like you're repeating the same patterns without growth. That's a sign. Are you feeling drained or uninspired by what used to bring you joy? That's a sign. Are you finding that things or people around you no longer align with who you're becoming? That's a sign. Now, I've really been experiencing, I've experienced all three, like for a period of my life, I experienced, I found that the things or people that were around me no longer aligned with who I was becoming. So I had to separate myself to, from them. But most recently, I've been feeling another way. I've been feeling kind of stuck. Um, like I'm repeating the same patterns of And there's no growth in the ministry, in the work that I'm doing. I've been uh, feeling drained most recently and uninspired at times by what used to bring me joy. And so when you have to be careful, when you go through periods like this, sometimes people who are around you will say words, hoping to comfort you, like they often will say, despise not the time of small beginnings. Well, it's not a small beginning. It's an ending this person is dealing with. So if any of these resonate with you, it may be time to embrace the change. Whatever that change is is in your life, this may be time for you to work through the transition and turn the page. So take a moment and reflect. Where in your life are you resisting turning the page? What are you holding on to that is keeping you from moving forward? Yeah, I'm kind of going a little slow tonight because I want this to be kind of rhetorical and reflective. Now, I want to invite you to the st- back to the story. The children of Israel had an opportunity. And the opportunity that they could have came right out of the old ending, moved through the transition neutral zone, and went right into the promised land. But there's a lesson here to be learned. We see the children of Israel were um, admonished to identify 12 elders, 12 seasoned individuals and send them into the the promised land. Now, they go into the promised land, and the instruction was just go and see. So sometimes just going and seeing sight is not enough. So they go into the promised land. For 40 days, they were in the promised land, hiding. They were spies. Those The inhabitants of that place didn't know they were there but they were on a reconnaissance mission. And sometimes source will send you on a reconnaissance mission. It might be a dream. It might be a a day vision. It might be a a commercial. It might be um, you're actually on a trip somewhere and you get to experience something that draws your attention. 
you've you've gone there and you saw it. But you got to come back. And you got to make a decision. The decision is, do I leave or do I go? Do I stick or do I stay? And so here's what happened. The children of Israel, uh, the leadership came back and 10 of the leaders said, we were as grasshoppers in their sights. So what they were saying to themselves, they're bigger than us. We can't do it. Based on their self-perception, uh, uh, perception, and based on where they've been and where they were was more influential than where they could go. And how many of us, where we've been or where we are is more influential than where we could be. 10 of them persuaded the community. And so that's why you got to be careful of the vote. You got to be careful of the masses. You, you got to be careful when you collect data that supports perhaps staying or lingering, especially when you're a silent partner, especially when source has told you it's time to go. It keeps giving you all assignments. Now, there was two other spies. And those two spies were Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua, Joshua and Caleb came back and they said, we can do this thing. Matter of fact, they understood the sense of urgency and they knew that what has been spoken by the 10 was setting in. And they said to themselves, they said to the children of Israel, let's do this thing with a quickness. But the 10 outweighed the two. Now, your sensory self, the five senses outweigh the six senses or the five senses outweigh the one sense of you. The two of you or the one of you is you and God. You are like Joshua and Caleb. The one, they were unified but they were not able to impress upon the people because of they are outnumbered by the 10 that represents your sensory self. Your sensory self will always give a report that is reflective of the reality of the limitations of a human expression of expressing as a divine spiritual being. There's a lesson to be learned here. They had the ending. They could not go back because of their, they crossed the Red Sea. There was no going back. All that lay ahead was the possibility of the future. But they were in a place called the neutral zone. The neutral zone is where you win or you lose. It is so easy to embrace the neutral zone like the 10 spies who influences the, influenced the children, they, they said we would have been better staying in Egypt. And so because the 10 outweighed the two, the democratic way, God said, because you chose to walk according to flesh, the sensory self, the past and would not embrace the possibility of the future. Anyone over the age of 21, you're going to march here until you die. So you can spend the rest of your life in the neutral zone, frustrated by knowing that I could have went there. But Joshua and Caleb, that young generation, they did not get denied the opportunity. They were at the oldest, they were 61 when they went into the promised land. There was nobody older than 61 going into the promised land. 
You can't take old things into new places. You can't pour old wine into new wine skin. No, you can't pour new wine into old wine skins. And so when we look at, it's not a age thing per se here, but until you get a new mind, you cannot go into what we would like to call the kingdom. You cannot go into what you are being called to because you have an old mindset. You're still holding on to old ideas. You're still holding on to old images. You have to have that ending. You have to have that ending. This is where you let go of what was. It's the process of accepting that a chapter has ended. Do you have a chapter that's ending right now in your life? Even that this ending means that you must let go of something familiar or comfortable with. Maybe you've already let go and you're in the middle, you're in the neutral zone. This is that in-between phase, remember, where the old has ended. You identify that you're no longer identifying with traditional religion. And that's the problem we have today. People will say, I don't identify with traditional religion, but they have not stepped from the, uh, the stalled place into the possibility of what it should look like. So this in-between phase where the old has ended, but the new hasn't fully come, because you got to wait. It's often a time of uncertainty, remember? It's a time where you become discomforted. It's a time where you spend much introspection. It's, it's like a pause. Now, ultimately, you'll get the clearance. Ultimately, what, appear, what, what, what would appear as have happened suddenly, you'll find yourself in the new chapter. But this only happens if and after you've gone through the process of letting go and navigating the in-between space, like many people that I have found who's following me are still holding on to the old, to the traditions. And that's why we can't pick up the momentum. And I kind of feel like Moses, like, can we just move on? But people won't let go. And so many of us see the promise, but will never experience the promise because we're unwilling to sever ties with the old because of transition, because of tradition. So it's time to turn the page. Many of you are still feeling stuck. You're feeling like you're repeating yourself. Many of you feeling drained and uninspired. And some of you are finding that the people you used to hang around, they're not doing anything wrong. They just irra. They're irritating you now because it's time for you to move on. Now, we've explored the concept of change, transition, and ambivalence. I invite you to think about your own life. What chapter are you still holding on to that already ended? What new possibilities might open up if you let go of the old story? The challenge isn't just accepting the external change, but it's in, in you find it in embracing the internal transition. And that means recognizing your ambivalence, moving through the discomfort, stepping into the new beginning that's waiting for you. It is a new season. Now, I'm going to give you an assignment. And this assignment I'm giving you to deepen your reflection and application this week. So here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to take time, and I'll send this to you with the, I'm going to edit this tonight, 
and I'll send it to you. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to, it's only a number, it's not a large number of people tonight, but I'm going to send it to you and I'm going to send it to those who are normally out here because I believe it's a crucial message. Crucial. So I want you to take time to reflect on a chapter of your life that may have ended, but that you chapter you haven't fully let go of. I want you to write down your thoughts on the following. I want you to write down what change occurred in your life. What ambivalence are you feeling about letting go? What steps can you take to fully transition into this new chapter? It's the same with an idea. If you get a new idea, an old one must die, must come to an end before you can actualize the new idea. So that's important. This is part of change. So I want you to reflect on this throughout the remainder of this week. And I want you to see what comes up for you. So next week, we'll discuss your experiences and insights. Uh, before we start class, we'll come out a little early or we'll do it on the, in the green room. So I'm going to make sure you get, the, get this assignment. Um, so, so don't worry about having to write it down. Now, I want you to take a moment as we prepare to end our day anyway, this, this, this day. Let's end it with some stillness and a prayer. So right where you are, I want you to just close your eyes and take a big breath in through your nostrils. Release it through your mouth. Another big breath in through your nostrils. Hold it. Now exhale through your mouth. Now continue to breathe in and out at your own pace as I give this affirming statement of prayer. Divine intelligence, we thank you for the many chapters. The chapters of our lives, each filled with opportunities for growth and transformation. We acknowledge the ambivalence we sometimes feel in letting go of the old. But we trust in your guidance as we step into the new. We affirm today, yes, that we're ready to turn the page, to let go of what no longer serves us, and to embrace the new beginning that is waiting for us. Thank you for the strength to navigate change and the courage to move through transition. And so it is. And so it is. So I want to thank each of you for being here today. For those who are here in the space call right now, and those who will be in this space at some a later date and time, which also will be right now, because nothing matters except right now. Take this message with you into the week that lies ahead. And I want you to remember to honor both the changes and the transitions in your life. So I look forward to hearing your reflections on next week. And so as we close tonight, I want to say thank you for joining us. If this message has been a blessing to you and you would like to be a blessing to me and to the ministry, consider sowing a seed, not because I have a need, not because of greed, but because you have found value in tonight. You can do it by way of Cash App or Zelle. And the number you use is 708-368-1077. Three six eight ten seventy six, and that'll go transmute what's in your hand into the ministry. And as you do so, you say money out, money in, money in, money out. Circulate, circulate, circulate. Awesome. So that's the message tonight. So I'm going to 
open up the green room and I'm allow those of you who are with me. Um, there's about five other people who are watching on the YouTube channel. We welcome you to Oasis Everywhere. Uh, and you can participate also by dropping into the chat, whatever it is that you might want to um, comment on. Um, I'm looking for aha moments. Did you get anything out of what's your takeaway from tonight? Um, and if you are in the Zoom room tonight and you have something you would like to share, um, you can um, request the mic and we'll go live. Or you can just type it into the chat and we'll go from there. So let's um, give you a couple minutes to to gather yourself and um, to go ahead and put your chats in. Go ahead, Cheryl. Okay. Good, good evening. Um, I was going to comment on the whole idea behind something beginning with the ending. So the ending being the first step and then the neutral and then the beginning. Uh, that's a different concept because you would think to begin the process, you would begin with beginning, not ending. Okay. So the ending represents the closure. Yes. And so you don't have a beginning until there's closure. And what happens, we, we run things into and it spoils. Mm. We, we run the old into the new and it spoils the new. You know that you are a seamstress. You know that if you have a new garment and you sew something old on to it, that is not, uh, even though today we wear things where we combine the old and the new, but mm. it's in its truest sense, new should be stand alone by itself. Yeah. Um, so um, we live in a very mixed up world today um, where truth is being, um, being um, what it, yeah, it was twist around. Tw it's twisted. Tw wrong is right. Twisted. And right is wrong. Uh, and there's no definitives. Um, yeah. And it's a sad state of affairs. That's true. Um, but so we got to have an ending. And then after you have your ending, you don't move right into your beginning. This is where we miss. We miss the, the beauty of the neutral zone. Mm -hmm. The neutral zone tells you <laughs> if you're really ready to go and stay mm. or to go and come back. Mm -hmm. And then once we complete that neutral zone, now you have a new beginning. Mm. That's important. Awesome. Good observation. All right? Yes. 